Well, good morning. Saturday morning, May the 27th. Beautiful, sunshiny day. Thank you, Lord. We're going straight into the King James Bible, the book of John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 23. And most of this is Jesus talking. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable Jesus spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. The wolf capture them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. And the Father knoweth me, even as I knoweth the Father. And I lay my life down for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. They shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment I have received of my Father. There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? And others said, These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. I took a brief second there to Mark verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and kill and destroy. I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. This is taken always a great percentage of the time in the wrong way as a prosperity line for prosperity here on earth when jesus says that they may have life and have it more abundantly he's talking about the life to come the eternal life Eternal life is more abundant than the earthly life. I mean, think about it. How can you have a more abundant life unless you're loaded down with things of this earth? 
And that's in contradiction to what Jesus is telling people. When he told that young man, sell everything you've got and follow him. And he went away weeping because he couldn't do that. Jesus didn't reward him abundantly for saying he wanted to follow him. He was asking, what do I do? He wanted to follow Jesus. But Jesus said, sell everything. So what importance does Jesus put on worldly goods? None. None. Absolutely none. So don't take that as a prosperity line, but as a line for heavenly life, eternal life, the more abundant life. And of course, the second big thing that I notice out of this is you notice how he's actually talking to us, the Gentiles. Because in verse 16, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. One fold, one shepherd, and I must bring them. Now, Jesus chooses his words very carefully. And when they were translated, they were chosen very carefully. And if someone must do something, it is imperative. It is, I must do this. I must breathe in order to live. You know, I might breathe. No, I must breathe. He says, I must do this. And they shall hear my voice. Well, how can we hear Jesus' voice if this was written still in Greek and Hebrew? He allowed the translations. And just as he supervised and guided the hands of those who wrote these words, so did he when he guided those who translated from the original languages. Because he said, we must. He must bring them. And they shall hear my voice. And there should be one fold and one shepherd. There is only one way, and that is through Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus took great lengths to repeat this message over and over in as many different ways as possible. And yet we still insist today that there are many roads to heaven. We are still told by Christian churches to be tolerant of other religions. When clearly Jesus says there must be one fold. There is one church. He is the door. He is the way. He is the one shepherd. You can't get to heaven through Buddha. You can't get to heaven through any other God. You can't get to heaven without accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I just, you know, this is ridiculous for churches to perpetuate this message, to corrupt the word of God and put earthly blessings upon us, saying, that, oh, that's what Jesus promises. You're going to be rewarded abundantly. PK talked about giving this morning. And that was excellent. Rise and shine this morning. Listen to it. PK's message is perfect. We don't give to expect to get to receive things here on earth. A cup runneth over? Yes. What does it runneth over with? Eternal life. You've begun your eternal journey the moment you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Did you know that? The sanctification process begins. That's your road to eternity. Don't expect anything of this earth. Because the moment you expect it, you're putting emphasis on it. And the moment you put emphasis on worldly gain, you're losing sight of heaven. You're looking away. This is the narrow path, the open pages of your Bible. 
the word of God. There's no earthly treasures in here. There's heavenly treasures. Seek the will of God. Read in Acts how Paul suffered tremendously. Five times he was given 40 lashes minus one. 39 lashes. It is said that some people couldn't survive getting one, and he was given it five times. He was stoned and left for dead. He was shipwrecked at sea and spent days in the water. He was beaten, tortured, thrown in prison many times. Does that sound like he received earthly riches? On top of that, he had his own personal affliction, which he asked God to remove three times, and God said, no, for in your weakness I am made stronger, I am made greater. Does that sound like Paul, the great one of the greatest writers of the Bible, had a fine old time living high off the hog here on earth? I don't think so. And he still worked his way around the Mediterranean. Beware of where your blessings are coming from. Beware of where your blessings are coming from. Are they truly from God? Because if you're focusing on your blessings, on your earthly blessings, and you're not focusing on heaven and doing good for others without seeking reward here on earth, then you've missed the boat. You've missed the boat. You've missed the whole point. You've missed it entirely. You've gotten on another cruise ship and you're heading to hell. Yep, I'm going to say it. You're on the wrong ship. You're listening to the wrong shepherd. Listen to Jesus Christ. Build your foundation upon the rock. Because it's said in the last days, there will be a great falling away. And you say, well, Chris, there's a great revival going around in this world at the moment. Is there? Are these people truly giving themselves to Jesus Christ or are they just paying lip service because it feels good at the moment and they want to jump in on the bandwagon? This is a personal journey. This is a personal journey to God. Don't think that jumping on some bandwagon and going along for the ride and everyone being happy and singing Kumbaya around the campfire is going to get you to heaven. It's in here where you're going to pay the price and you're going to give it all up for Jesus Christ. It's in here where that decision is made. It's in here that you're going to open up and fill that void in your heart that is only God-shaped. Nothing else will fit that hole. Only God. I remember my good friend Terry telling me that years ago. There's a hole in your heart that's God-shaped and only God can fill it. And you can try and fill it as many different ways as possible and get temporary joy and happiness, but it just goes away. It's only God that can fit that hole. Focus on things above. Focus on things eternal. Focus things godly, for his ways are greater than mine. His understanding is greater than mine. Do it in faith, in blind faith, because we cannot see. I'm sorry, it's a little heavy, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Do not focus on worldly things and think, God has blessed me. And this is good. And focus on it. Yes, he can bless you with these things. But the moment you focus on it and try to build on it and brag on it, you're just blown it because you're, you're losing your focus. I'm not saying take it for granted. Yes, be grateful, but know where it's coming from. And know that God cannot look upon sin. So if you think you've been blessed in some way and you're still sinning, 
Well, where did that blessing come from? Is it a true blessing or is it a ball and chain? Now, does that mean you've got to sell everything and start off from scratch? No. What it means is you've got to give everything up and submit to God and say, I give me to you 100% total submission in everything I say, do, see, think, and hear. I want you to help me with it, Lord. I want the blessing of the Holy Spirit to be upon me. And let's start again, because he loves you, and I love you too. Have a great day now. Speak to you tomorrow.